our town. I'm your host, Essie Curtis Rockwell, and the joy of the <laughs> Lord is my strength. Have you ever been inspired by someone? Mm -hmm. Can you imagine being inspired by your faith in God? Have you ever thought or dreamed about taking a journey, being led by the Holy Spirit and allowing him to take you someplace you've never gone before? Well, today, from the Nehemiah Global Foundation, we have Mr. Terry Williams, and he's going to share with us about being led by the Holy Spirit. Thank you for joining us today, Mr. Thanks. Williams. Thanks, Essie. It's wonderful to be here. Well, it's yeah. so good to have you and to get to know mm -hmm. you better. And our viewers would like to know a little bit about yourself sure. and what it is that you do mm -hmm. at the Nehemiah Global Foundation. <laughs> well, Essie... Um, it's really a journey about, you know, where it says in the Bible about when God gives you your dreams and your hopes. Well, I was basically uh, raised in Las Vegas, and in Las Vegas, uh, I was on a board of directors of a large church. But just backing up a little bit, I had a counselor when I was in high school that says, Terry, you can go to Wall Street and you can become a stockbroker in the New York Stock Exchange. And I said, Oh, Mrs. Pearson, there's no blacks on Wall Street. There's no Hispanics on Wall Street. But she says, you can do something. And then I said, okay, I'll just, it went right over my head, right? She said it three times to me. And the third time I really believed it and it got sunk in my heart. And about four and a half years later, I became a investor and a financial planner on Wall Street with Sherson Lehman Brothers, all because somebody believed in me and they spoke life into me in that area. Now couple problems. I stuttered, I'm black, and I had uh, legally blind. That's kind of like a lot of things, but I was like the little tr little train that could, you know. I just believed it, and I went like this, and it's like I um, proceeded. And then in Las Vegas, uh, about nine years ago, I was on a large church board of directors, and uh, my wife says, hey, go down to the local store, and I want you to uh, get this box of produce for a class they were doing at church. And I went down to the local store and they gave me this box, never knowing that this is the beginning of a food bank ministry. I just being obedient to my wife, Linda. And so uh, I took this box back. The store director liked me. So he says, hey, come on back on a Friday night and I'll give you enough food for 10 people. Then it was 30 people the next day. Then the next thing you know, we were feeding like 70 people per day and that was like seven days a week. So Nehemiah Global Foundation started off in Las Vegas with one little box and today we feed about 600,000 people per year. That's amazing. From one little box, can you imagine that? That is amazing. Now who are you serving right. primarily? Yeah, you know there's a lot of widows and orphans and uh, folks so here in Colorado uh, there's a lot of disenfranchised folks like you look at Colfax and you, you look at downtown capital, uh, capital market our capital area, you see a lot of homeless. So um, moms, single moms, uh, first time people coming to food banks. There's a lot of people today that are working poor and we get a chance to touch them, but seniors who are uh, going without good food and children going to school. So we have a chance to touch a lot of different people. And what do you mm. believe, uh, Mr. Williams, triggered you yeah. to get involved and to start this? <laughs> It was totally God, you know. Uh, when you take a look at Matthew 25 and it talks about feeding the widows and orphans, I'm only a, like a servant. So as a servant leader and executive director and founder for Nehemiah, my role is to go out and build relationships with some of our corporate sponsors. They're so generous. Yeah, we receive about six million to seven million pounds of food every single year and we get a chance to then work with about 31 other different organizations in multiple states that allow us to get then get the food out to the people. And I'm like the undercover boss, like that show Undercover Boss. I love to go into food banks and people don't know who I am. So I'm there, there and all of a sudden they, they, they see a $19 per pound thing of cheese or they see their favorite preserves and their organic uh, fruits and vegetables. And, and I get a chance to watch God's glory as they pick up organic. And this is really good for their health as well. And that's so wonderful. Yeah. And so God is really using you. Now, yeah. I also know that you serve the disabilities, those mm -hmm. with disabilities, yeah. those that are disabled. Mm -hmm. uh, can you share with us about sure. what you're doing with them? Yeah. Uh, when we came here, we looked at uh, different markets. We wanted to uh, build, a, we still want to build a uh, children's ranch, and I'm really excited about it. 
So we selected uh, Colorado to move here five years ago to build a children's ranch, and it's called Abba Ranch, and it's basically Father's Ranch. And one of my hopes and dreams was, and still is today, is to serve the kids in the foster care and the adoption kids. And, uh, and when you look at, there's over 10,000 kids today who are actually foster kids in the state of Colorado, in and out of care. Their mom or dad may have been taken off to prison, but can you imagine for a second, two o'clock in the morning, the police show, uh, human services show up, and the mom and dad are taken away, and the child is now put into foster care. Can you imagine what that looks like when you get a 55 gallon empty bag of trash can bag, and you put all your goodies, your, your favorite bear, your your favorite clothes in that bag, and then you're gonna be put into the foster care. Uh, that's a really a travesty. Over 10,000 kids are in that situation. The disabilities, uh, just back up, we needed the licensing to start the ranch, and I became licensed with uh, the Department of Human Services to do the foster care license and the adoption license. That's where all it came from. We needed to get licensed to start the ranch, and then in turn, uh, we, uh, discovered that certain kids were disabled, and so they're autistic, and there's over uh, 12,000 kids here in the state who are autistic, and or um, uh, cerebral palsy and those kind of things, Down syndrome, so. Now how bad is the hunger relief problem? Mm. What do you think? Um, big problem. Uh, the city and the state is growing. We're getting uh, probably about 100,000 more people per year into the state of Colorado. Some numbers indicate about 4,500 people to as much as 10,000 people moving in. Could you imagine for a second how many homeless that are coming in transit and then you add the new population base? <clears throat> so we have about estimated about 388,000 people that are actually uh, uh, hom homeless or hunger, uh, what I call hunger insecure. They're going without it, not knowing where their next meal is. Can you imagine not knowing where your next meal is? And all of a sudden you go, um, like you look at certain, certain chicken places, right? And they put chicken places out there. So Tuesdays might be two pieces of chicken for $1.99. That's their hot meal for the week. That, is, that, that doesn't say anything about nutrition value at all. So we actually have, you know, six or seven million pounds of food. And That's, that is such a blessing, yeah. uh, Mr. Williams. And so we're hearing from you that you allow the Holy Spirit yes. to lead you Amen. and to direct you. And so viewers, we don't want you to live in fear of, I wonder if I have the knowledge or the talent or the skill mm -hmm. to do something. We invite you to allow the Holy <clears throat> Spirit to lead you and guide you just like Mr. Williams did. Uh, why is it important to meet people's needs mm. uh, that are very vulnerable? Why do you mm. feel that's important? Um, my goal, and I always equate myself to be like Joseph of the Bible. Joseph was put in a very important position in the, in the king's, uh, king's uh, care to then rule over the nation and rule second in command. So today as Joseph in that analogy, I'm actually both a Barnabas an encourager, and I'm also Joseph. So my role today is to, how do we feed 10 million people per, per year? How do we go from 600,000 to 10 million? And then how do we serve a nation that has a lot of churches who have people that might be going to the food bank for the first time or not? Dignity is very important. So compassion, love, dignity, all those things are very important to show. So when I go to the uh, food banks, I get a chance to go pray with people. I get a chance to hear their story. And as I hear their story, my heart just go out because I get a chance to know that some of them are ADDH. I know that some of them have uh, maybe dental problems and they're there for food, but that doesn't mean that, you, uh, that they're bad people. Right. They're just, they're great people and I love to serve them. I love to see their smile as they walk into the food bank and all of a sudden they go, wow, there's something that I, there's an organic or all natural this or that, and they, and they put it away. And that leads me to the mm. next question. How mm. are you helping those that are mentally have mm. disabilities? Oh man, 
my heart just goes out to the caretaker, the moms and dads and guardians, because there's 82,000 people here in the state that are actually considered to be intellectual developmental disability, <clears throat> and about 12,000 of them are children. So imagine the, the mom or dad who has a child who's two and a half years old, just getting diagnosed as autistic or cerebral palsy, and they know that something's wrong on the developmental disability side of slowness, but they don't understand the long-term effect. So today we take care of the children who are now uh, intellectually developmental disability and the adults providing support living services. And it's just so, uh, my heart just goes out to the caretaker. Could you imagine for a second, you are an oxygen support, you might have a feeding tube, and then you're, uh, you're, you're either dis disabled because of autistic or cerebral palsy. Imagine all the conflicting co constraints that are on that mom and dad 24 hours a day. So if we can come in and provide that service, that uh, really helps the, the caretaker or parent. And, and it really takes love, compassion, um, the, the ability to heal. I look at the um, ability to heal, to touch and to pray over people like that. Now, can you briefly mm -hmm. uh, tell us really mm -hmm. quick, financially, how are you helping mm -hmm. uh, the individuals? Because we know families and young people alike mm -hmm. are struggling yes. trying to make it in this economy. Can you real quick in about 10 seconds or so, <laughs> tell us what Global's doing? Uh, basically, every time we provide food to a family, we're adding about $75 a week of monies that they don't have to spend on food. So if you take that times four weeks or five week month, uh, you'll see that we're, we're adding almost 11 to $12 million a year of economic value to families that we serve. So our foundation receives in kind value of that much and then we turn around and give it back to the people. So now they can tithe, they can they can spend things on utility bills because we provide over almost $12 million a year of economic value back to them. Well, I want yeah. to thank no, you, I Mr. Think. Williams, for just, being our special guest yeah. today uh, from the Nehemiah Global Foundation. Yeah. And we want you to be encouraged viewers just as he did something that he maybe didn't think he could do, but he allowed the Holy Spirit to lead him and guide him. We want you to allow the Holy Spirit to lead and guide you in everything that you do. Amen. Amen. And again, thank you for being our host, Mr. Williams, <laughs> to join in our town. Thank you. And I'm your host, Essie Curtis Rockwell, and I want you to let the joy of the Lord always be your strength.